everyone, uh, good Monday evening, Tire Metalhead Weatherman here, hopefully everyone is doing well. So, we're back here taking another look at the holiday forecast, we're finally in range of the Euro now for Christmas at least, and we're within range of the uh, GFS for New Year, so this is not the final holiday forecast, but at the same time, this is a peek to what lies ahead here. The final uh, forecast obviously won't be till like the day before maybe the morning of we'll see how it plays out here but that being said i hope you guys have been enjoying the content make sure you hit that like button smash that subscribe button if you're new around here and also uh obliterate that share button because this could affect a lot of people's travel here because there is a storm system that i am watching right now this storm system, by the way, if we look to the screen on the right here, if we go to day six probability for severe weather, predictability is too low. So it means that there's a chance and that chance exists all the way through to days seven and eight. Day seven and eight revolve around Christmas Eve and Christmas Day as well. Still a little bit of uncertainty as to where the area would be as well. Hence why they also don't have the 15% uh, risk area that you would see here in the yellow. But that being said, let's go ahead and actually look at the models and get an idea of what could lie ahead here. So if anyone's new, by the way, we the way we do things when we go split screen here, the European model right here. Yes, there is a European model to those who don't know that uh, actually does cover the U.S. here. And then the GFS model. Both these models are, very, are uh, pretty reliable in the uh, medium range in particular and the short range for the most part. But uh, these are really good for uh, picking up on storm systems well in advance here. So that's what we're going to be looking at real quick. Like I said, we'll start with the Euro here on the left. So here's our current storm system in our trough. This is what's going to be causing a lot of cold air to the eastern half of the U.S. A little bit of ridging starting to take shape here. We've been kind of tracking that on the last few videos on here, talking about what lies ahead, so to speak. But as we continue to go forward here. This is the system that is going to be coming into play for Christmas time here. Now, a couple things about this system. There's a couple of different scenarios that I've been seeing pretty consistently. <clears throat> for the most part, the Euro definitely is a setup that has a chance for some wintry precipitation. It's going to be pretty far to the north here towards areas like Minneapolis, like uh, Minnesota, or like the state of Minnesota, Wisconsin north and south dakota and maybe even the great lakes <clears throat> but um over here towards but if we uh go over to the uh, gfs here we're painting a bit of a different picture that the track of that low ends up being almost entirely different here that low kind of dissolves and another low tries to take over here and this low isn't even as impressive as this one here and also the progression is different it's a little bit slower so these factors coming into play here will ultimately affect who may or really may not get snow. But this low is slightly better developed. But what I want you to pay attention to in particular is watch what happens as time goes on here. So we continue to move forward, and this is a couple of days after Christmas, maybe even three days here. We can see that this low really starts to take shape as it gets towards the Ohio Valley. And this is one thing that I've kind of seen congruency between the uh, Euro and the GFS here. We uh, go to the GFS, we see a pretty similar deal here. But one thing to make note of here, the secondary low starts to pop up more to the south. And this could produce severe weather a little bit after Christmas. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But look how deep that trough starts to dig. And if we get any sort of moisture on the uh, back side of this, it could result in some snowfall for some areas really far to the south here that aren't used to seeing it. Southern, App Southern Appalachians could see measurable snow here even. So we'll have to see how this plays out. I'm watching this one very closely. I have been for the last few days. And then, of course, from that point onward, this is us looking at the GFS. This is what lies ahead as we head towards New Year's Eve. Just another storm system coming in here. Another trough it from the looks of it. This looks like a positively tilted trough, but you still have to keep an eye on those. What we saw in Tennessee about a couple weeks ago is a prime example of that. <clears throat> and then as we continue to go forward here, 
here's another storm system coming in. It looks like a really big one around what looks to be the third of of uh, January here. So we'll have to keep an extra close eye on that. This is us looking at the upper levels, though. The mid levels usually will give me a better indicator of what the pressure is like and sometimes even the temperature. These little um, pressure contours here are lines, whichever one you want to call them. They do have numbers around them, and the number that I often will uh, look for in particular will be the uh, 540 line, because that's usually associated with 30, the uh, 32 degree temperature. So right here in this uh, still, that's where our 540 line is. That's where we are seeing 32 degree temperatures or below. Any any number below 540 will almost certainly have freeze, below freezing temperatures. But here's what we're looking at as time goes on this ridging comes in pressure increases so dealing with a little bit of warm air starting to come in then here's our next storm system and like i said this is the main reason why i'm not super concerned about a uh, wintry precipitation seeing 558s right here long way to go to get to where we would have that wintry precip come in <clears throat> and it's really not until that low really starts to deepen do we see that 540 line start to show up and you can tell that it starts to deepen because the uh, contour lines start to tighten up. So, like I said, I mean, it makes sense considering this is an area of low pressure. So as time goes on, we continue to see this 540 line here. And like I said, the track of this low is going to be the key to everything. Because we, we saw the comparison with the GFS here. This was a little bit further to the south, so it couldn't mean snow for the south this run pushes it more towards the ohio valley it kind of favors that a little bit more also make note that this is right at the end of this model run so there's a lot of room for both of these runs to change here completely so if you're looking for snow don't get too excited if you're not looking for snow and you don't want it don't panic but as we continue to go forward here we can see pretty similar scenario playing out <clears throat> and then also as we continue to go forward we can see that low pressure that I was talking about coming into play in regards to the 28th starts to deepen a bit more as it goes over the south here and like I said it's a little bit elongated so really the question will be can we get moisture on the back side of this if we get any moisture on the back side of this the chance of uh, wintry precip further towards the south will increase then there's this system after that a lot of cold air it almost looks like it's kind of wedged in here and then we have to watch this for potentially uh maybe i'm not entirely sure but maybe bringing in a little bit of wintry precipitation towards the northern appalachians maybe towards the mid-atlantic <clears throat> with wedges it's kind of hard to tell usually it will lead lean into more drier air with this setup and then as we continue to go forward here, this is a setup that I'm a little bit interested in here. If that uh, this jet streak goes a little further to the south here, we definitely would have to keep an eye on severe weather. Of course, this is all the way out to the third. So the time frame with this, like I said, it's a lot of room for changes here. So keep an eye on this. But if this low comes to fruition here, that's a big storm that could affect a lot of people. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what the air masses are going to look like over the course of the next few days here. This is us looking at the Euro and you can, and you can see here, it's not really till the latter half of the run here where those, these, uh, cold air masses and low pressures get a lot stronger. <coughs> so, like I said, it's really not till we get towards the Ohio Valley towards the end of this run about 10 days out. Where we start to see a little bit more pronunciation with that low and with that would come maybe the threat of a little bit of wintry precipitation if we make that comparison to the gfs here we'll make sure we get in the right time frame it's pretty much a similar deal to start out with neither of these lows really hold up well it's not until we see this one that digs further to the south here that uh looks a little bit more impressive here and then from that point, the storms also start to look more impressive. Like I said, though, end of the model run, can't put much merit into that. If it was a 90 hour, if it was the 90 hour year, I would be maybe uh, a little bit more confident in that. But that's what we're looking at as far as the uh, upper levels of the atmosphere. 
we're going to switch over to dew points here take a look at the potential for severe weather because these moisture returns are very much the key here and as we go towards the 22nd we do see a small moisture nose try to develop here into the 23rd it's it's pretty much a similar deal it's not really well pronounced towards the 24th and like i said maybe towards the ozarks has been a point of interest maybe even the gulf coast where we could see maybe a chance of severe weather and then this pushes maybe towards the gulf coast on christmas day after that not much of really anything to go off of here on the euro gfs is going to show a little bit more interesting of a picture here so the moisture is a little bit more aggressive with the gfs here get a stronger moisture nose we get into those mid 50s which is pretty much the bare minimum you would be looking for in regards to severe weather as time goes on here, you can see those uh, 60 degree dew points uh, coming into play here, especially towards Christmas Eve, heading into Christmas Day. And this is where my interest kind of peaks a little bit here. Like I said, really it's towards the Ozarks and maybe the uh, Eastern Plains here where we might have a severe weather threat. And then from that point, moisture never really goes away too, too much. But look what happens here with that wedge. Look at how that moisture just gets... Uh, forced into submission and pushes down to the south here then as we continue to go on here we start to look pretty dry and then our next system comes into play here and with the system that stout it's pulling a lot of moisture early on already so like i said i'm really concerned with uh what would happen if this scenario were to come out to play here uh come to come into play i should say but couple things that i would make note of is of course probably the ozarks again so definitely favor an eastern plains east texas type setup here from the looks of it right now of course like i said 16 days out can't really put any merit into that right now but like i said main thing we're looking for more more than anything is trends if you're uh if you've been on the channel for a while you know how we do things here Another thing that we see with the in correlation with the uh, pressure maps and also the air mass maps is also the temperatures. So this is what we're looking like. And I have a little bit more confidence in this as far as the holidays are concerned right now. Is that we're with that ridging, we're going to see slightly warmer temperatures. No record highs or anything of that variety. But as we go towards Christmas Eve, we could see some areas pushing into 60 Maybe a couple areas towards South Texas, maybe the Gulf Coast getting into the 70s. But for the most part, it's widespread 40s and 50s out towards the heart of country and beyond to the east. Out west, it looks like we've kind of shifted into a little bit more of a, a negative PNA setup where it's a little bit colder out there, a little warmer out to the east here. As we continue to roll, we can see uh, that storm system coming in and those temperatures starting to evict north those warmer temperatures evicting to the north so with that storm system coming in not really looking like it would be a too stout of a front right now but if even so this could still be a uh, troublemaker in the days after christmas and right after that we get into a pretty big cold snap here to uh go through the middle or ending of so-called christmas week here see those uh widespread single digit temperatures for lows over here towards the rockies nothing unfamiliar for you guys but still might want to turn on the heat just a little bit i know i would but then again i'm from georgia that being said <clears throat> go ahead and switch over to the gfs it's pretty much a similar deal a little bit colder to start out this week no real surprises there but what we're looking at in particular of course is that christmas storm like i said not really much in the way of cold air to support that storm and really get anything going as far as the wintry side of things severe side definitely seems consistent with uh east texas maybe um the western ozarks here which would be louisiana arkansas here and then as we continue to go forward we watch the next system come in and that's when things kind of get wacky here you can see the uh, major contrast here, the cold temperatures. And then right towards the end of this run, we try to see some warm air sneak its way back in from the south. And like I said, the system like this gets going. It could be a major uh, havoc maker for a lot of us here to start the new year. Because really, we're just, we're just going to be adjusting 
if anyone's been drinking, their hangover is probably going to be ending maybe the day before or maybe on this day. So definitely going to be uh, watching this one pretty closely. That being said, let's keep things going here. We're going to actually go to the Euro and look at our lightning flash density. This will be leading into Christmas and a little bit beyond. And like I said, for the most part, with the way things are set up right now, the country's pretty quiet. It's really not until we get towards the 23rd into the 24th. And there's our area of interest right there. That's going to be likely where we see severe weather. Like I said, I really think it's going to be amongst this particular area here. So that's going to be a point of interest to watch. And then as we continue to go forward here, we see some leftover storms maybe on Christmas Day towards the Gulf Coast. Maybe a little bit to the southeast, but these are quickly going to kind of wither away as time goes on here. And then beyond that point, it starts to quiet down briefly before this next slew of storms come in. So with that in mind here, we're going to switch over to what our precipitation map could look like right as of right now. The uh, GFS does not have the uh, lightning flash density here, unfortunately, so can't show that to you right now. But that being said, this is what we're looking at currently and over the next day. Then here comes that storm system. We see we see a little bit of snow towards the Rockies, but once we get past the Rockies off to the east here, mostly looking at rain. Can see a little bit of wintry precip on the back side of this kind of being associated with some of that cold air out from the Rockies. But the further this low gets away, the uh, quick, the quicker this snow shield really starts to just kind of wither away along with it. By the time we, uh, by the time we see this low back off here, it might be enough moisture to get a little burst of snow here based off of this run. But of course, like I said, 216 hours out, a lot of room for changes here do get a low pressure again over towards florida so that could be something to watch this looks like it would be an afternoon setup based off what i'm seeing now so that's good news we don't need nocturnal setups especially during this time of year <coughs> and then as we continue to go forward towards the 28th there we go this is what we're looking like maybe a coastal storm i'm thinking mostly not though but that being said here Things are going to get more active as we head towards the end of the year in particular, like we were talking about towards the beginning. But here's that storm system again. And here's where we start to deviate. Like I said, we mainly see that moisture, that uh, wintry weather over here towards the Rockies. Once we get out to the east here, not really much of anything left for uh, the Midwest here and the uh, Central Plains. After that we uh, see this system come in it gets going and then on and here's what then this is where things kind of get wacky here from this low here this could be a big uh interior northeastern storm and then towards the back side of this try you see an attempt almost of uh some southern appalachian snow here then as we continue to go forward here's the next system coming in Definitely has a look like it already want, is already a, kind of favoring a squall line, but of course, 16 days out, it's almost impossible to know the details. I'm pretty sure that this look is going to change considerably by the time we get close to this date here. But that being said, there's plenty to keep an eye on on the channel here, so we'll keep popping out, pumping out the videos here. That being said, again, hope you enjoyed. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. I know this was a little bit longer of a video. Make sure you smash that like button if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button if you're new and also obliterate that share button. See you guys in the next one. It's been Ty, your Metalhead Weatherman. Until next time, stay warm and take care.